cool too, man, is, man, uh, uh, right, right when P. Rob uh, uh, came up here, man, and just started speaking, when he was speaking uh, during the songs, man, with that uh, uh, prophetic word, man, praise the Lord. Holy Spirit instantly teamed us up, man, and, 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 and praise the Lord, man, P. Rob opened up the altar, and what was so cool is to see the boldness of people. Amen. Get up out of the way and to come up here and, and receive what it is that they needed to receive. And what's so cool, man, and also in that, I was uh, uh, thinking to myself, man, I know that that's someone who just wants to run. <laughs> they're afraid of tripping <laughs> right? praise the lord Amen. so what's so cool man with that man it, it brings us great news to let you guys know that we are so close to that wall <laughs> okay. the yeah. other side is looking great it's absolutely beautiful i do have a, a handful of pictures there's gonna be more pictures to come but i do just have a, a handful of pictures man to show you guys, man. That's uh, some of y'all didn't even know we had another bathroom. <laughs> you guys think we just have this one, but we actually have a whole new bathroom over there that's gonna be for the ladies. So we got everything sheetrocked in there, man, ready to rock and roll, and it's gonna be absolutely insane, man. It's so cool. We tore down the drop ceilings, man. We're sheet rocking on the other side, and it's gonna be so cool. We're shortening up that or widening up uh, 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 the hallway over there. The sanctuary right on the side of this wall, that our sanctuary, sanctuary is going to be double. It's been primed. It's been uh, sanded, primed. So we are just so excited, God. so Amen. pumped, praise the Lord. Man, it's awesome. And what's so cool to me is uh, uh, um, this door. I, I, mean, I know people are going to get mad, but uh, uh, wow. Heidi, man, was busting her butt over the last year. She primed the whole thing by herself. Yep. She asked for help. I said, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, come on. I can't stop it. the Lord. She took the last second. But, uh, but straight up, man, she's over there priming the whole thing by herself. And she was great when she got done. Yeah, she, she was. was. Going over yeah, it, she was. Pretty funny. But, uh, but she's awesome. And uh, yeah, uh, Aubrey, man, Will, and Amy are just sheep rock masters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Doesn't matter how heavy it is or how long it is. It was like, just give it to me. But just the, the crew that showed up yesterday, man, praise the Lord. Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, Miss, uh, praise the Lord, man. We had uh, Mr. Buddy who doesn't even come here, praise the Lord. His wonderful wife does, but he came over to uh, help people uh, getting off of work, man, able to come over here and help. Mr. Bradley, man, has been building me a banging stage that's going to go from one wall to this wall. And, uh, he's going to be running all up and down this thing. Just a rat trip came in, man. It was just so cool to see how many people were able to. Siobhan, Joshua, just so cool, man. Miss oh. Beth. Dawn made us a uh, lunch. Nice. Oh, Killer yeah. baby. Oh, yeah. With meat on. I said, hello, come on. <laughs> Some people talking about, I don't eat meat. Awesome. Give me their meat. But if I, I'm leaving your name out, I promise you I'm not trying to. It's just I'm just so blessed as a pastor Amen. to see so many people who are so Amen. willing to come in. Amen. And uh, Mr. Mark, when he got off of work, came to work. And it's just so cool, man. It's just awesome. But praise, praise the Lord, man. I just wanted to share that with you guys. But I do have a question, man, as we begin to get into the Word. If you have the opportunity to choose who you would rather look like, would you want to look like the well, well-respected religious leader? who seems to have it all together, who everybody looks up to, who has all the right friends, the powerful position, the beautiful home, the sweet ride, hello, an amazing family, money, or would you want to look like the broken prostitute who has nobody in their corner, the one who has been tricked out too many times, used up and abused up, the one who is embarrassed but yet has experienced the love of Jesus. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Amen. We have to begin to ask ourselves because truth be told, we are one of those two characters. Yeah. Yeah. Our life, the way we live our life, represents one of those two people. Let me read you guys a letter that, uh, that was written to me. It says, for as long as I can remember, I have known you. It's always crazy when it starts out like that, right? <laughs> I had your back to the thick and the thin. I lied for you when you were wrong, and I boasted about you when you were right. Some may say that we have even been joined at the hip. If you were to look back over your life, I have treated you great. The fact is, more times than not, it's you I have put above myself, uh, put above anyone else uh, uh, when you were great. Growing up together, I tried to make sure you were taken care of, making sure that you were number one in front of everybody else in line because after all, you always say everything is a competition, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> you wanted the biggest cookie, I saw to it that you ate it. You wanted the, comfortable, the most comfortable chair in the room, I saw to it that you got there first. And when you started driving, you wanted the best parking spot. I didn't care if I had to beat out the old lady, for you I would. <laughs> in school, I noticed the little things that you liked, so it was those little things that I went after. All for you. You loved attention. I saw to it that with everything in my power that you got all the attention you could handle. You wanted the spotlight. I made sure that you were always in it, always shining upon you, even if it meant that you got in trouble. Every picture, I always make sure that you look the best. Huh. After all, that's true. After all, haven't you seen some of the comments that people say about you? Pretty flattering. Stop it. <laughs> and when you struggled in your addiction of pornography, it was me who kept that secret. I always did anything and everything to keep you happy. You wanted to keep winning in everything you did, and you always wanted to get your way while at the same time looking humble while you did it. Do you know how tricky that was? But yet I saw to it that it happened. And when you got married to Cindy, the most wonderful woman you've ever met, trust me, I know. Take my marriage, for instance. I promised to love my wife, put her needs above my own. But you constantly insist on being first. Three o'clock in the morning when the babies are crying, I know what I should do, and that's get out of bed so my wife can sleep. But then I hear your voice running through my mind, act like you're asleep. After all, you are comfy, right? And then I end up putting my needs above hers. Frank, I know that you can't get defensive at times. Obviously doesn't know me. <laughs> Stupid writer. <laughs> Somewhere about that. I got defensive. But you, but you have to hear this. You need to be broken. I have said some pretty mean things to some pretty mean and pretty nice people all on your behalf. You never told me some of the words that I would say would cause so much hurt in their lives. Frank, I love you, but the truth is, I can't keep living for you. You always insist that if I keep you happy, then I'd be happy. Frank, I let you be in control long enough. I've let you sit in the driver's seat long enough, and it's clear that you can't be trusted. You keep insisting that the way that we should go, but it always seems to end up at a dead end. I'm looking at other options, and I have decided to begin a journey down a different path. It's a narrow path. It's a difficult path. Many don't choose this path, but it leads to real and abundant life. But Frank, there's no easy way to say this. I can't take this path if I bring you along. Mm. So Frank, this is the end of you. Sincerely me. And truth is told, truth is told, each and every single one of us needs to begin to dig into a letter that we write to ourselves that begins to declare that it is the end of us. Jesus out of Matthew 5, 1 says this, I'm coming out of the King James, uh, New King James, it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, at, uh, when he seated his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because I'm excited about this sermon series that we're kicking off today, man. A sermon series that we're kicking off is called The End of Mises. <laughs> it's really cool, man. Every once in a while, man, I'll be reading a book and Holy Spirit will, uh, will give me a sermon series based off of a book I'm reading. He'll give me awesome ideas as, as I begin to read this. And, and that's where this came from. This came from a book called The End of Me. And as I was reading this book, man, Holy Spirit just began to give me all kinds of ideas. So we're coming out with it today called The End of Mises. And what we're going to find inside this sermon series, man, is how, when, and where that God can actually begin to use us. And the how, when, and where, man, truth be told, is when we come to the realization that we have to be at the end of me or at the end of man. Jesus. Because we cannot be used by God if we are full of ourselves because we're not going to listen to him and we're not going to obey the very things that he tells us to do. So we have to be at the end of Mises. And we become, when we come to the end of Mises, when we realize that we are not Jesus and that we're just broken individuals, man, do you understand how beautiful of a day that actually is in our walk? Jesus says that you have to be uh, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. What does that even mean, Jesus? Right. You know, the disciples was like, what the heck? Yeah, we ain't got no money. Awesome. Free and like Flynn. Hello. You know what I'm saying? But I love how the message puts it. He says, you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. Yeah. Yeah. With less of you, 
With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. What does it mean? The message breaks it down to its perfect. When you're at the end of your rope, what does that mean? You're broke. When you realize that you have nowhere else to turn, nothing else to give, you're just straight broke. Jesus is basically telling us in Matthew 3, man, that blessed is he who acknowledges, blessed is he who receives, blessed is he who accepts that they are broke. We have to be broke. Handful of uh, Wednesday nights ago, man, I, I touched briefly on, um, on being broken. Uh, uh, the following Saturday, we had prison ministry. Praise the Lord, man. Uh, 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 pastor Jimmy, who's a, a pastor to the inmates, praise the Lord, at the prison, uh, had a word. Didn't, didn't know what I was speaking about. I was speaking about being broken. He had a word for the inmates before I got up there. And he said, guys, we have to be okay with being broken. I was like, man, praise the Lord. When Holy Spirit was prompting me for this message, he brought me back to uh, what we talked about at the beginning of 2016, that the word for this church is restore, yeah. restoration. Yeah. Yeah. But before we can be restored, we have to be broken. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So this is what's so cool, man, how Holy Spirit is bringing all of this together. Here's Jesus. He's going to preach his famous message, the Sermon on the Mount. And he begins to go up, climb up this mountain, man, and he begins to speak about a new way of life. Truth be told, it's absolutely confusing, though, that this new way of life is a backwards way of life. In order for us to live, we must die. For us to stand, we must kneel down. For us to be made whole, we must be broken. For us to be first, yeah. we must be last. It makes no sense. It's backwards. But here's Jesus, and he climbs up on this mountain, not to only be heard by his disciples, not to only be heard by uh, 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 the crowd of people, but also to be heard by the revolutionaries. See, there was a, a group of revolutionaries, man, that were lying low in, by these mountains by the Sea of Galilee. They were hiding out because of the, the things that they were trying to do coming against the kingdom. So they were hiding out in these mountains, man, so that indeed they would be avoiding arrest. So Jesus, being a revolutionary himself, says, okay, not only do I want to teach and preach to my disciples and to the crowd, but I can do that right down here. But I want to get into a position that even those who are hiding in these mountains will have no choice but to hear the echoes of my voice. Yes, as a revolutionary, I agree with you, down with the kingdom of man, but make no mistake, it's up with the kingdom of God. And Jesus begins to step into this message and he delivers and he says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Not the poor in spirit like me and you oftentimes think. The type of poor that says that we have no money. The word that Jesus uses in the Greek, man, for poor can actually be translated to destitute and bankruptcy. You're bankrupt. Jesus is saying, blessed is he who is bankrupt. Blessed is she who is bankrupt. When we get to the point in our lives that we realize man, that we are 100% bankrupt in spirit, that we have nothing else to offer, God says, sweet, about time. Because now that you realize you are at the end of me or the end of Jesus, hello, now Jesus can actually step up and begin to do what it is that he wants and needs to do in your life. When we come to the point that we realize that we're bankrupt, and that's when the kingdom of heaven can begin to pour into us his riches, amen. And it's absolutely amazing. Each and every single one of us, man, truth be told, need to take an inventory of our life. And if we'd be truth in our inventory of our life, then we would all come to the same conclusion that we have nothing to offer amen. Jesus. Oftentimes when you ask, especially Christians, but when you ask people, you know, what, what, what do you have to offer God? And they'll give you all kinds of crap. You know, and I this, and I, you know, that I'm, I'm nice, and, and I'm, I'm bold, and I'm good in this area of my life. And truth be told, you have nothing to offer Jesus. That's right. That's right. The only thing that we have to offer Jesus is this. That's right. Serious? Now, this is awesome. <laughs> Make no mistake. <laughs> But truth be told, man, the only thing we have to offer Jesus is our life. Amen. To lay it down at the altar and realize this Amen. is it. Right. Nothing else, Jesus, can I offer you because truth be told, I'd screw it up. That's right. So it's so amazing at what he begins to do when we simply say, I have nothing to offer. He says, awesome, because I have everything to offer you. Amen. You are emptied of yourself, sweet, then I can yeah. fill you up Hallelujah. of me. And this is going to be an amazing relationship. Just pay attention. Yeah. Good. I love it, man. In, in Luke chapter uh, 7, verse 36, coming out of the message again, 
It says, one of the Pharisees, and we later find out this fellow's name is uh, Simon, but one of the Pharisees asked him, him meaning Jesus, over for a meal. So he went to the Pharisee's house and he sat down at the dinner table. Just then a woman, the, uh, uh, um, the woman of the village, the town harlot, uh, prostitute, uh, having learned that Jesus was a guest in the home of the Pharisee, came with a bottle of very expensive perfume and stood at his feet, weeping, raining tears uh, uh, on his feet, letting down her hair. Oh my gosh. She dried his feet, kissed them, and anointed them with the perfume. When the Pharisees who had invited, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, "If this man, what if this man was the prophet that I thought he was, he would have known what kind of woman this is who is falling all over him." He gets in his feet. He's like, "Back to my goodness, it's absolutely insane, right?" Jesus is invited over to this religious leader's house. Now, we can think to ourselves, man, that's, that's cool, man, that this Pharisee invited Jesus over to his house, but truth be told, that's wrong. His attitude, and Luke is quick to point it out, his attitude, I have to believe, man, that he invited Jesus over for a specific reason. Yeah. Yeah. He invites Jesus over simply to drill him. He invites Jesus over because in his mind, the religious leader that he is, he's going to expose yeah, yeah. this so-called prophet. If he was a prophet I thought he was, if he was a prophet you thought he was, then you would have welcomed him properly when he stepped into, his, into your house. Yeah. But you failed to do that, so you didn't acknowledge him as a prophet, nor did you acknowledge him as even a man of God. And Luke's, uh, 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 the way Luke lets us know this about this man's attitude, he did not welcome Jesus at all into his house. Mm. It's custom to begin to kiss the hand of the guest that yeah. you welcome into your house. Mm. That's welcoming. Mm. Jesus didn't receive no kiss. Jesus didn't receive a proper welcome into this man's house who invited him over for dinner, but it kind of gets you thinking, how many times or do we at all properly welcome Jesus nice. into our house? Yeah, that's good. Whether it be our physical house or whether it be our temple, how many times do we honestly welcome him into our homes, into our lives, into our marriages? How many times do we honestly welcome him into our relationships? We can break it down even more. How many times do we welcome him into the topics of our conversations? Oh, good enough. Hello, ladies. How many times do we welcome him into the topics of our jokes? Come on, fellas. Yeah. Right? right? The topics of the things that we're looking at on the internet. How many times do we welcome him into the, into the uh, 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 things that we begin to run through our minds that we want to do to the person that's standing next to us, whether they're hot and sexy or whether they just get on our everlasting nerve? <laughs> How many times do we welcome him into that? See, truth be told, when we begin to think of it like that, Simon's not the only one with a welcoming issue. Right. Yeah. So too oftentimes do we. Yeah. The closest thing Jesus comes to a kiss from Simon, truth be told, is duck face. Prophet, I thought he was. He's, I think he's going to kiss you now. He's got duck face. You know, he's about to take a selfie. Right. It's crazy. He's the guest of he, he, he's he's the the guest of honor. He's being welcomed or being invited, not being welcomed, being invited over for dinner. And truth be told, what should have taken place is Jesus' feet were washed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with this kind of a dinner, then the host would be beside the one who is washing the feet of the guest. Yeah. It's a slave job. Host doesn't have to do it, but he would darn sure be by there. Why his guests are getting their feet washed. Think about it, man, they're walking on these dirty roads all the time. It would be as, it's, it, as it's for us as if we were sitting down before we eat dinner, we sit down and wash our hands, right, I pray. Right, right. Yes, yeah. Before you cook fast or anything, I pray. <laughs> but it's, it's funny because when we read scripture, we see that he was sitting down at the table. Truth be told, yes, they were sitting down, but more so they were kneeling, back, kneeling down, uh, kicked back on a pillow. So your feet's all up in the stuff, right? So you don't want someone with stank, dirty, corny feet <laughs> sitting at the dinner table. You want those feet to be taken care of, praise the Lord. But Simon even blows this off, right? He doesn't even offer Jesus a bowl of water to clean your own feet. He's going to see to it, oh yeah, this prophet's coming in, but yeah, but look whose feet is the dirtiest. See, there's no welcoming at all. 
Then we go down to being in a custom. What you would begin to do is anoint, anoint one's head with oil. That's the, the, uh, 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 the, the, the hospitable thing to do. That's the welcoming act that one would take for their guests of honor. And you don't just use any oil. You use the finest of oils. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You're loving the people that you have invited over to your house. But does Jesus anoint, or does Simon anoint Jesus? No. Truth be told, those of us who are not broken act the same exact way. Many of us don't kiss the hand of Jesus. We seek after the hand of Jesus and not his face. Mm. More times than not, we don't welcome Jesus as the guest of honor. If we're not broken, then we think Jesus should be welcoming us, mm. welcoming us as the guest of honor. Mm. Think I'm wrong? Ask yourself, how many times have you been humble to God's people or not to God's people? That's good. And let's not even talk about feet washing. Right? If I was to break out the bowl of soapy water right now. Some people are like, I ain't washing no one's feet. <laughs> and Lord Jesus, I pray they don't call me up to get my feet washed. Right? <laughs> we wouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? You're wearing new socks too, so when you pull off your socks, you got all the lint between your toes. You don't think I ain't washed my toes in I don't know how long, right? <laughs> Over there taking your sock, shoes and socks off and you're digging in between your toes before someone can even wash them. Come on. <laughs> But y'all ain't never been in a service like that. <laughs> Me neither, just checking. <laughs> but, but it's crazy, man. Because if you think about it, man, we, we don't want to be involved in stuff like that. Well, I'd wash Jesus' feet, but that's, yeah, would you? Because Jesus actually tells me in Scripture that what we won't do for one of the least of these, we actually don't do for him. So when we don't do for the one that we can't stand, when we don't do for the one that gets underneath our skin, the one that gets on our very last nerves every time we even just simply think of the person, <laughs> what we don't do for that one lets us know that we don't do for Jesus. And I'm not talking about wetting the feet. I've, I've been in some of the people like, Done. No, 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 Paul. You can't wash his feet. Are you going to eat off of those feet? <laughs> no, they ain't clean. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You clean them if you can eat off them. Can I get an amen? <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. We have a feet wash. Layla, come up. No, I'm picking. <laughs> like, oh, man. She would do it. See, she would do it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I know she would. But the truth be told, man, oftentimes we have the attitude of Simon. We refuse to wash Jesus' feet. Now, I wash his feet, yeah, but you refuse to wash that other person's feet. And in doing so, we refuse to wash Jesus' feet. And Jesus, praise the Lord, man, said that, uh, uh, um, um, that what we won't do for them, we don't do for him. But if we do for them, then we do for him. And it's absolutely awesome. Sometimes we don't understand why we have to do these things, but make no mistake, when you do those things for the least of these, you're doing it for Jesus. And I'm not saying that everything you do for the least of these, you're just going to be jumping for joy. This is going to be absolutely awesome. It's not a fantasy world. Sometimes we're going to be like, man, shucks, I really have to clean that person's feet. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget one time, man, that uh, we were in Myrtle Beach, and uh, we were out there for, uh, for war, man. They had uh, um, uh, involved in a... Uh, convention man that they were doing a ministry through hip hop Ooh. and also hey praise the Lord and also we're getting some awards for the hip hop thank you Jesus Hallelujah. and uh, we were in the park ministering to some homeless people and I've shared the story before but uh, the Lord put it on our heart to pray for this lady with her feet and she was telling us how swollen and how painful her feet were so we asked her if, she, if we could pray for her feet and uh, she said yes so uh, uh, we like skin to skin so I don't want to grab your shoe and pray over your foot now can Holy Spirit work through the shoe 100% but uh, uh, we like to place what's hurting in, in our hand. Oh, so right. we asked her to remove her feet. Oh, <laughs> 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 Thank you. So a whole different type of prayer. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we asked her to remove her, her shoes. Praise the name for this number. But uh, to remove your, her shoes and her socks. And, and literally, when we first saw her feet, at least I, I can't speak for uh, Pastor Rob, Note, and Will, but for myself, when I first saw her feet, I said, Jesus, for real. <laughs> <laughs> True story. They probably said, 
I was like, mercy me. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't start playing. <laughs> so I was like, so, so, I remember bending down and, and, and she placed her feet in my hand. But it's so cool how at first when you're like, oh, my goodness. But then the Holy Spirit hits you. Yeah. And the compassion that you have, that That's when that foot right. goes in your hand, that you just want to massage the pain away, that yes. you want to, yeah. to uh, 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 anoint away yeah. all those aches and yeah. those pains, the yeah. cuts and the damage yeah. that has obviously been done to her foot. And it was just absolutely awesome as we're praying. And all of us have our hands on these ladies' feet. And uh, she just starts bawling in oh. tears. Oh. We move from her. We go to this other fella. And um, we begin to pray with him, and, and he lets us know some of the things that's going on. And then the moment that we begin to pray for certain parts of his body that was just ate up with disease, um, he begins to sob violently, if you will. Mm -hmm. I mean, tears just coming out and, and snotting. And um, at one point, it was windy, and I remember when... Yeah. Yeah. So, so, this is this is good. Because I remember when it started flinging off of his face. And as I'm down here, real talk, as I'm down here, I'm praying, but then I'm watching. Oh, man. And you can't stop praying. That's just wrong. You can't get out of the way because that's just rude. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. So I did, what I tried to do was dodge it. Well, I didn't. No, I think I did but I didn't know if I did, so I dodge and I instantly look at Pastor Rob and my eyes are this big. And he looks at me and he goes, <laughs> and, and we just keep on praying. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so then sometimes, man, in things that were like, oh, man. But you still do them, and that's the thing. Are you still willing to do them? Are you still willing to be the hands and the feet of Jesus? So when we're not, we have to begin to ask ourselves or really confront ourselves and say we have to stop being that religious leader. Amen. To anoint the head of Jesus is the welcoming, is the hospitable jester. How often are we welcoming to God's people? How often are we welcoming to those people who don't know God, who want nothing to do with God? How often do we welcome those whose lives that does not resemble us at all? Or how often do we truly welcome those who are so far away from God? To tie in Wednesday's message to this me today's message, how often do we truly welcome Holy Spirit? Yeah. See, the truth is the difference between us and Simon is at least Simon wasn't pretending. Mm -hmm. That's right. Simon was just being straight rude and it was obvious to every single person in that room. And isn't it funny if you think about it that this religious ruler was breaking the religious rules? Right. Kind of crazy. That's right. It begins to truly show us what his true opinion and how he truly felt about Jesus. But then again, it's just like Jesus' people who claim to be Jesus' people, but yet then ignoring acting hey, like him. It truly begins to show us how they truly feel That's real. about Jesus. We see Simon, and here he is. He's comfortable. He's well off. He's liked. He has power in a powerful position, feared by the common folk. Doesn't even recognize the one who is standing in his face is the very one that he claims to follow. He's not broken is the yeah. problem. He's full. Yeah. But not full of Holy Spirit, not full of Christ, not full of God. He is full of himself. He's arrogant. He's prideful, just like so many in the church and if you're here today i wish for you to hear this in the mighty name of jesus Amen. maybe you're thinking to yourself and i've been guilty of this man i wish so and so was here i wish so nice. and so would hear this mm -hmm. truth be told it might not be for so and so <laughs> it might be for self hey. yeah. and the pride and the arrogance that we have oftentimes Amen. takes it off of self and we automatically place it on somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. So we have to begin to grab a hold of that. Because Jesus is here for you yeah. right now. Amen. He'll get the other ones later on. Yeah. But he's here for you right now. And we have to begin to grab that. Yeah, that's right. So let's pay attention to what it is that Holy Spirit is putting on our hearts. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to what Holy Spirit is putting on our mind. Pay attention to the convictions that indeed we are feeling. See, we, we see scripture, and, and in scripture, he begins to show us that, that uh, this woman shows up, this party crasher comes on scene. 
She's not welcomed. She's not invited. She just simply shows up. Have you ever been that person to a party? You just simply show up. <laughs> Layla is awesome. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is awesome. But praise God, I've been that person. I've, I've just showed up. Me and, me and some of my, my boys back in the day, man, we would purposely show up to parties just to crash. I mean, if we weren't invited, well, then your party's lame, and we're going to show up to shut it down. You know what I'm saying? So, I know, truth be told, that there are so many other people in here because you showed up to some of the parties I was at. No, I'm taking it. But anyway, so this woman <laughs> shows up, man, not invited, not welcome, not asked to be there just simply shows up why because she heard she heard yeah. that Jesus was there yeah, right. isn't it funny that oftentimes we tend to think that Jesus is for the righteous but in scripture we always see that it's the sinner That's right. who always yeah. truly comes to seek after yeah. Jesus yeah. this harlot this prostitute this tramp this whore just showed up and now everything is even more uncomfortable She's boldly but yet brokenly walks in to this religious leader's house. Amen. Are you kidding me right now? You've got to straight be joking me, you home wrecker. How dare you step into my house? You know that's what Simon was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Scripture lets us know. Yeah. He's insulted. After all, she's supposed to show up to his house after everybody's gone. Mm. Not why everybody's uh, uh, there. Right. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Right. Wow. And now here she is, full of shame, full of guilt. Full of disgust. Why? Maybe because she hates what she's doing, or maybe in a sick, twisted way, she likes what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But either way, something that night yeah. brought her to the very room that Jesus was Amen. at. Do you remember how you felt that night or that day that brought you to the same place that Jesus was yeah, at? Yeah. Or Jesus showed up Hallelujah. to the place that you yeah. were at? Church, I pray in Jesus' name yes. that we will never forget that. Yeah. So when we have that one in front of us, who the church world or the religious world has already bashed almost yeah. to death, mm. right. that we could show up and say, you know what, I've literally been in your shoes. Right. And there's a man named Jesus, yeah. not a pastor, Amen. not a church, yeah. not a religion, Amen. but there is a man named Amen. Jesus yeah. who is here right now in the very room that you are yeah. in, and he wants to radically change Amen. your Hallelujah. life. But here she is, man, and, and, and she's here maybe because she, she's heard of Jesus, obviously. Maybe she's heard a message of Jesus. Maybe the very message she heard of was Jesus, was a famous Sermon on the Mount message where Jesus preached a backwards way of life. Mm -hmm. Either way, this woman needs right now that backwards change that only Jesus can give because every relig religious leader she stands in front of begins to condemn her to hell for right. the decisions right. she's made. She needs Jesus who will come up to her and say, I will raise you out of hell yeah. because of a decision you can make. Yeah. Hello. Amen. Amen. She needs that. Maybe you're here today. Maybe uh, the church has written you a one-way ticket to hell because indeed of the sin you've done or the sin you're in or the sin you're doing, the sin you've done, whatever. Well, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is a great reversal. And he's here indeed to reverse that. He's here to cancel out that one-way ticket to hell that you were so freely giving by the religious. Yeah. He's here to cancel that out, to wipe away your sin, and to redirect you heavenly back. Yes. He's here to fill you, to empty you of yourself, and to fill you with Holy Spirit. He will teach you to abstain from ungodliness. Hallelujah. He will teach you to abide in him, to walk Preach. according to his word. Not according to your flesh, not according to the ways of yeah. the world, not according to the law, not according to the government, but according to his law, Hallelujah. according to his word. And it's absolutely powerful. It's good. If looks could kill, then I promise you, this young woman or old woman, however old she is, yeah. would be D-O-A. But all she sees is Jesus. Amen. I encourage you today, church, despite what the naysayers are saying, despite what the haters are whispering, you just simply keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Because like Pastor Rob Amen. says, man, they don't have a heaven or a hell to push right. you with. Okay? Right. You keep your eyes on Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Yes. Keep your eyes on the one who can change your outcome in yeah. life. Amen. Amen. Don't keep your eyes on the ones who That's want to right. condemn your life. Keep your eyes on the one who wants to change your life. Amen. Every eye is condemning this woman. Every eye in this house is judging her, killing her. Half of them probably have been with her. 
Ladies, man, thinking she's trash. The men thinking she's just a good time, but yet Jesus thinking she's treasure. Amen. Man disregards, man throws aside that which is broken, but Jesus de desires yeah. and he cherishes right. that which is broken. Yeah. Jesus kicked back, chilling. Here comes this woman right up to him broken. She kneels down before him at his feet. The same feet, mind you, that were neglected and left dirty by Simon. Mm -hmm. And isn't it funny how this woman, broken, busted, disgusted, dirty herself, kneels down at the uh, uh, dirty, unclean feet of Jesus. Just like Jesus is always so willing to kneel down at the broken, dirty, unclean life yeah. of each Amen. person that he comes across Jesus. in the soul. The moment she does this, you know that everybody's jaw straight hits the floor. Yeah. What is the teacher going to do to this tramp? And they are all waiting, all taking out their cell phones, getting ready to record this. So this is going to be after Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. You know what I'm saying? This is just going to be absolutely awesome. You can only imagine how nervous she was to look around. Knowing all the hateful looks. That, have you ever walked into a place and you're just like, Oh. Oh. <laughs> me, me, my sister, and Johnny, my brother-in-law, we went to this uh, diner at one time, and we won't name it. It was an extremely uh, um, uh, redneck uh, diner. And uh, nice. so, so, so we're in this diner, and at the time, man, you got to understand, dude, I would wear, like, feather pants. I had chains hanging down, man. I had uh, uh, shirts that I was, like, halfway buttoned and just chains, and my hair was always a crazy different color. And I walked into this place, and, like, everyone's like... And I'm like, oh. and no kidding, my foot gets stuck in a high chair. I wasn't in a high chair. I know where the jokes are going with that. But they were by the side, and I guess when I came in to make room for everybody else, I stepped, and my foot gets stuck in a high chair, so I try to walk, and it's sticking to me, and like my foot's trapped in, so everyone's looking at us, going, ah! You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm the crazy guy. <laughs> Keep looking at me. I'll slit your throat. You know what I'm saying? I was crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I've been there when you walk in, and it's like everyone's looking at you, and they're like, oh, my gosh. Am I going to make it out of here alive? I went to Man's Red and White one time, and I looked the same way, and I had a, somebody tell me, young man, when you come... <laughs> When you come out of here, I'm going to shoot you. Oh, <laughs> I was like, shucks, right? <laughs> Even the clerk was like, um, young man, I can't let you walk out of here. Because <laughs> I can't wait he's going to shoot you. <laughs> I was like, shucks, man. But yeah, so I've, I've, I've been with she, and I know that many of you guys have as well, been where this woman's at, too afraid to begin to look around because of all the hateful looks that she knows she's getting. I'm sure she's afraid to look around because she's terrified of coming face to face with the woman's husband that she just spent the night with last night when he was working too late. You can only imagine what's going through her mind. Wow. But what she does, praise the Lord, she keeps her eyes on the very one who dared to connect with her in an intimate way. The only eyes that truly mattered were the eyes of Jesus, and she locked eyes with him. His eyes didn't beat her down, didn't scold her. His eyes smiled at her, letting her know how loved indeed she is. Yeah. That she is treasure and not by no means any trash. His eyes showed her, not only do I accept you, but I'm the one causing you to empty out yourself. Yeah. I'm the one. My presence right now is the one who is allowing you to finally... <coughs> And completely be at the end of yourself. I'm the one who is forcing you right now to take inventory of your life and for you to realize you're straight bankrupt. Yeah. And tears just begin to roll down from this woman's face. All she could do is be real with Jesus, not even saying a single word. All she could do is just be real with Jesus. Why? Because his love is so real with her. Amen. It's absolutely amazing. She gets on all fours, as one can imagine, begins to kiss his feet, the dirty, sweaty, smelly feet of Jesus. Her tears make up for the water that Simon, the religious leader, even failed to bring. And it's cool, praise the Lord. 
How when we begin to cry those Jesus cries, how he just clears everything up in our life. I can see clearly now my tears are gone, right? I can see all the religious leaders in my way. <laughs> There's Jesus. I can see. <laughs> but you get you, you, right? Get Will up here with me. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we're talking about. Get Will up here with me. But you can only imagine. You can only imagine. And here she is, and she's just bawling. Kissing his feet, washing his feet. Washing someone's feet, man, is a sign of, of humility. Yeah. You're, you're just letting everybody know right now, I am broken. It's what yeah. a slave did. Understand that. It's what a slave did. And here she is, washing the feet of Jesus. And as she's washing the feet of Jesus, she can't leave his feet wet. That's crazy, right? I mean, have you ever seen somebody come out of the bathroom and they just wash their hands? And you're like, what's going on? They're like, hey, man! <laughs> you're like, Jesus, I hope they wash their hands. <laughs> and they're like, I just washed my hands and see you thinking, oh, okay. I pray. Hands sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So she knows that she can't just leave his feet wet. She can't ask for a towel from the host. Why? She's not even welcome to begin with. She's not even supposed to be there in the first place. She's the unwanted guest, yeah. even worse than Jesus. Yeah. We wanted him here, although we don't want him here. Right. We just want to expose him, but we don't yeah. want you here at all because we don't want you to expose us. Oh, stop it. See? <laughs> so what does she do? Praise the Lord. Like my sister said, the unspeakable, the unimaginable, she lets her hair down. We have to understand, women did not do that. They wore their hair up in public. The only man that would ever see a woman's hair down was her husband. And if her husband saw her letting her hair down somewhere else, it was grounds for divorce. It was indecency. Wow. Hello. I had somebody say to me one time, you know, you're hell bound with those tattoos. I said, well, I'm not your husband, honey, and you got your hair down, hell bound chick. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Uh -huh. Come on, man. Do you want to go toe to toe this? Come on, my friend. I can't get my. I let Cindy on. You know what I mean? Stop it. You can only imagine the gas. The gasp of the men, what is this woman doing? The ladies, this can't be true. She just let her hair down in front of this man. Church, can you imagine what would begin to happen if we would truly begin to let our hair down before Jesus? If we would say, Jesus, nice. <laughs> here I am, exposed. Exposed yeah. before me. Yeah. Exposed before you. I want you to be my husband. Hello. Yeah. I want you to be my everything. I'm letting everything down. I'm emptying out myself. I am hey. so broken. I am so bankrupt. There is nothing left of me. Jesus, let me use my hair as a towel for you. This woman is absolutely amazing. No water, she uses tears. <laughs> she said, Jesus, your feet are being washed. No towel, she said, I will use my hair. She is broken before Jesus. My God, if we could get to that point. She is at the point where she is realizing now, standing before the great I am, that you have given me everything that I need. You've already given it to me. Oftentimes, Christ calls us to step out and do something, and we're like, well, I'll do it when you give me this. And he goes, I've already given you everything you need. You just step. Amen. Well, yeah, but you got to begin to make a way. I've given you legs and feet. Step. Right. To, well, uh, you place your hands on this person and heal them. Well, I, I, I don't want to place it. Uh, you got to do this. I've given your arms and a hand. Reach your arm out and touch them with that hand. Amen. And watch the very things that I'll do. Oftentimes, we just want to keep our hair up in a bun. Man bun. Right. I'm good before you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
try and everything is just going great. We got our, uh, you know, we look good. Got a man bun going on. But man, when we begin to let that down, and we're just straight exposed before Jesus, my God, imagine the things that could happen. That's when this lady, that's when this lady, make no mistake, begin to receive. She she was giving to Jesus. But when she lets down her hair and just fully exposes herself before him, she begins to receive the very thing in the spiritual that Jesus is doing to her. She's broken, but yet she's being healed. She's broken, but yet she's being restored. See, being full of self says, Jesus, I need. Jesus, I need. Jesus, I need. But yet being broken Let's us know, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for placing me here. Thank you for sending me there. Thank you for allowing me to do this for them. Full of self is I. Broken is you. This woman kneels down before Jesus, broken, stands up, restored, healed, cleansed. Jesus goes on. If I could have my worship team come up. (laughs) Jesus goes on and he said to them, said to him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Oh, tell me. Two men were in debt to a banker, which is awesome. That Again, remember now, the word's bankrupt now. He's talking about a banker. Two men were in debt to a banker. One owed 500 uh, silver pieces and the other, only, uh, the other 50. Neither of them could pay up. And so the banker canceled both debts. Which of the two would be more grateful? Simon answered, I suppose the one who was forgiven the most. That's right, Jesus said. Then turning to the woman, and I love this, turning to the woman, but speaking to Simon, he said, do you see this woman? That was awesome. (laughs) That was like right on time. He said, do you see this woman? I came to your home. You provided no water for my feet, but she she rained tears on my feet and dried them with her hair. You gave me no greeting, but from the time I arrived, she hasn't quit kissing my feet. And this woman does the next craziest thing on earth, man. She begins to break out her perfume. Understand, some women, especially prostitutes, would wear it around their neck. And she would begin to open this up and and pour it out. Now, what a a prostitute would do, truth be told, is one drop, one man. Boom. Smells so good. One drop, one man. One drop would have been far more than enough for Jesus' feet. But what does she do? She breaks it over his feet a sign saying i want nothing else to do with my old way of life because i am bankrupt before you now i want nothing to do with my old way of life i am done of me i am empty of me i am at the end of me i took inventory and truth be told i have nothing to offer you except this And she offered all she had, all she was. The most expensive thing, some people would say was the perfume. No, the most expensive thing was her. And she offered herself by getting rid of the thing that was binding her to her old way of life. She got rid of it. And because she did that, she was forever changed church when we empty ourselves before God when we are completely broken we lay everything down at the feet of Jesus everything that we believed kept us whole the job the career the money everything we did that kept us satisfied the 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 premarital sex the drugs the the this and the that the whatever sin it is when we lay that down at the feet of Jesus the labels that anybody and everybody else wants to put on us. (laughs) Those labels. 
that drive people to the, to the uh, uh, brink of suicide, those labels that keep people in a state of depression, those labels. When we put those labels before the feet of Jesus, broken, that's when he begins to make us whole. Jesus offered two gifts that day to two different people. Two gifts to two different people. He offered to the girl who he offered the, to the girl the, the prostitute, he offered the gift of brokenness. And in offering her that gift of brokenness, he made her whole. And to Simon, he offered the gift of rebuke. Oftentimes we think to ourselves, man, rebuke's not a good gift. No, rebuke is an amazing gift. Because when we are prideful, we need the gift of rebuke before we can receive the gift of brokenness. Because our prideful state doesn't allow us to see that we need to be broken, so we've got to be called out by Jesus, by Holy Spirit. We've got to be called out. And I promise you, he will do it. To one, the gift of brokenness. To the other, the gift of rebuke. He goes on to say, you provided nothing. Nothing for freshening up. But she has soothed my feet with perfume. Impressive, isn't it? She was forgiven many, many sins. And so she is very very grateful if the forgiveness is minimal the great the gratitude is minimal then he spoke to her and said I forgive your sins that seat that uh, the dinner guest talking uh, 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 behind his back who does he think he is forgiving sins and I love this he ignored them <laughs> right I'll deal with you guys later. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Being put together didn't save her. Being presentable didn't save her. Having everything lined up didn't save her. Having all the money in the world didn't save her. Having the most clients didn't save her. Having a church position didn't save her. Having friends didn't save her. Having a wonderful family didn't save her. Being popular didn't save her. What got her saved was a man named Jesus because of the gift of brokenness. Being broken at the feet of Jesus saved her. Allow God today, church, to break you brokenness is absolutely beautiful the world says we lose value when something broken God says something is is priceless when it's broken before me broken things people are priceless before Jesus be broken because when we're broken before God we actually reveal 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 the power of God so again let me ask you if you had to choose today would you rather be like the well-respected religious leader who seems to have it all together? Friends in a, a, a powerful position, everyone looks up to money, sweet ride, beautiful home, lovely family. Or would you rather look like the broken prostitute who's been used up and abused up? Who's had too many tricks to even remember? Embarrassed but broken at the feet of Jesus, experiencing what it truly means to be whole. Which one would you rather look like? Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We give you all honor and all glory, God. You are absolutely amazing. Jesus, we thank you, God, that uh, you came down to earth, if you would, into the house of earth for us to be those prostitutes. We've sold ourselves to the enemy. We've sold ourselves to sin. We've sold ourselves to our flesh. We're prostitutes. But God, that you would give us the opportunity, the honor and the privilege to fall at your feet bankrupt. 
not pointing a, a condemning finger, not giving us a glare of, of condemnation. But God, opening up your arms to embrace us. God, to give us a look of compassion and love. Lord, and I thank you, Jesus, for those of us, God, who have been assignment. That we've been in the presence of you, Lord. And we're, we're not following you in a relationship. We're following the word, uh, 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 the Bible in a religionship. Lord, let us to remember that the Word became flesh. Let us not just to look at some of this Word, but to abide in the Word, Jesus, as the Word, Jesus, abides in us. And my Lord, for those of us who have been that Simon, God, I pray for that gift of rebuke. I give the rebuke that will begin to break us so that we will too fall at the feet of Jesus. That we too can say, you know what? I may not have been the prostitute. I was the religious leader. But Lord, I thank you that me and the prostitute have the same gift, the gift of brokenness standing before our God. And Lord, I thank you that when I stand up, I kneel down to you broken. I stand up well, restored, healed, whole. God, to be your hands and to be your feet, to be your mouthpiece. To do the same to those who are, out, who are out in that world. Some know they're broken, some don't. Some know they're the religious leader, some don't. Lord, so allow me to be you in the flesh. Holy Spirit, lead, guide, and direct me. Does anybody here today who don't know Jesus? We had an amazing opportunity earlier. And praise the Lord for the mighty men and mighty women who came up here to do so. Maybe you didn't get out of your seat at that time. You weren't sure. Maybe you heard today that you know that you do not want to be that religious leader. So we'll give you an opportunity. If that's you, just simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. We're going to have everybody repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. There's only one. It's you. I thank you. That indeed. Your answer to me is yes. I'm forgiven. I'm loved. I'm whole. Because I came to you bankrupt, broken, at your feet. You picked me up. And you have asked me, who is here to condemn me? My answer, Lord, is no one. And Jesus, I thank you. That you too did not condemn me. But I thank you, Lord, for your powerful words to tell me to go and sin no more. So, Lord, I thank you for the ability, the power through Holy Spirit to do what you called me to do. To be who you called me to be. I'm all yours. Broken to be made whole. And all God's people said, hallelujah. Church